why is it that we find abandoned places so fascinating? Is it because they offer us a window into a forgotten time? Is it because they take on a strange, hard to explain air of beauty when all of the people have gone away? Could it be that we find them oddly haunting? We can't say. All we know is that we love them and we're always happy to hear their stories. That's why we're excited to bring this video to you. The Burda region of Slovenia is a hot spot for the production of orange wine. It might not be as popular as white, red, or rosé wine, but it's becoming increasingly popular in Europe, and this is where most of it comes from. Right at the heart of the wine-producing region, though, is the abandoned village of Slapnik. This tiny settlement was once home to around 80 people living between just 17 houses. But there's been nobody living here for decades. The former homes of the residents are just about still standing, but vines and foliage have begun to grow through every door and window. There's no single incident to blame for the abandonment of Slupnik. It was simply a slow process of people either passing away or moving on over many years, until there was nobody left. The very last residents are believed to have moved out shortly after Slovenia became independent in 1991. In 2018, the Forgotten Village very nearly got 17 temporary residents when the BBC announced plans to film a reality television show there. But the plans fell through and the village remains empty. During its heyday, the town of Tsaltubo in Georgia was thought of as the most luxurious, desirable spa resort in the whole of the Soviet Union. Sadly for the town, its heyday was a very long time ago. It was identified as a potential location for a sanatorium town during the 1920s and quickly flourished in that role, becoming famous for offering mineral spring therapy and radon water therapy. These Soviet sanatoriums were once so popular that four trainloads of people arrived each day from Moscow to enjoy its facilities, although some of those people were ordered to attend as part of the mandated right to rest scheme. Joseph Stalin was especially fond of Tsaltubo and had his own private bathhouse built there. The popularity of Tsaltubo endured for as long as the Soviet Union did, persisting until 1990 when the USSR collapsed in on itself. It was entirely abandoned between 1990 and 1992, but thereafter became a shelter for Georgians fleeing war in Abkhazia. Around 8,000 people lived in the empty sanatoriums for a year or more but today they stand empty once more. They're in a surprisingly good state of repair, all things considered. As the Soviet Union began the difficult and dangerous task of cleaning up Chernobyl after the infamous nuclear disaster of 1986, one of the many logistical problems they had to deal with was what to do about the vehicles used in the cleanup. Any vehicle that was close to the power station when it melted down was contaminated as was any emergency services vehicle that attended the scene and any vehicle that was used to excavate rubble or waste. All of those vehicles became dangerously radioactive, and so they had to be sent somewhere for permanent storage. That somewhere turned out to be the previously sleepy village of Buryakovka. The tiny village is only 40 miles from Chernobyl, and its residents were evacuated in the aftermath of the disaster. They never came home. Instead, Buryakovka spent the next 10 years being filled up with hazardous waste from Chernobyl. At first, the vehicles and equipment were dumped in carefully dug trenches. By the end, they were just being lined up in the streets. Much of the waste is still radioactive, albeit not as radioactive as it was during the 1980s and 1990s, and the facility is officially off-limits to civilians for 300 years. Our next abandoned location goes by a few different names. It's sometimes called Hasim or Hashima Island. Other people call it Gunkanjima Island. To most, though, it's simply called Battleship Island because of its distinctive shape. Once upon a time, this floating town off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan, was the world's most populated island. Now, it's totally abandoned. The artificial island was built by the Mitsubishi Corporation during the early 20th century which had found a large submarine coal deposit beneath the few rocks that marked this place on the map back then. 
Japan was going through a boom period of industrial expansion at the time, and coal was needed desperately. That meant Battleship Island had to grow fast. By the start of the 1940s, the island's production capacity was 400,000 tons of coal per year, all of which was mined by enslaved Koreans who were forced to live there. The workers lived in 10-story apartment buildings, which were connected together and included restaurants, churches, school facilities, and even a few gaming houses. The residents called it Midori Nashi Shima, which means the island with no greenery. The coal eventually ran out in the mid-1950s, so Mitsubishi closed the operation down and sent everybody home, turning the whole island into an enormous time capsule. The technical name for this space-age piece of technology is ROT-54, but it's far better known as the Haruni Mirror Radio Telescope. It's named for Paris Misakovich Haruni, the man who built it in Armenia during the 1970s. Had it ever worked as it was intended to, it would have been the most powerful radio telescope in the world. The facility stands at the top of Mount Aragats, offering an incredible view across the Armenian hills. The dish alone measures 177 feet across the center and was configured to make observations at the 300 gigahertz level. Sadly, it was never meant to be. Work on ROT-54 began in 1975 and continued for the next 10 years. By 1985, scientists were ready to begin testing it at partial capacity, but their work was curtailed by an earthquake in 1988. It took until 1990 to get it up and running again, by which time the powers that be had decided it would work better as an astronomical telescope. Converting it to serve that process has proved to be a fool's errand. The project has suffered technical setback after technical setback. Since the control arm of the secondary mirror failed in 2012, it seems that the government has finally given up on it. The interior of the facility is still beautiful, but no significant work has ever been done here. The history of Holloway Prison in London, England is long and complicated. It opened in 1852 as a general admission prison, but was repurposed in 1902 to become England's first female-only prison facility. Because it was female-focused, Holloway is where the suffragettes were sent during the early 20th century, many of whom went on hunger strike. Nazi sympathizer Diana Mosley was held in Holloway during the Second World War, and later notorious inmates included murderers Mira Hindley and Rose West. In 2015, the government made the sudden and unexpected decision to close Holloway permanently and offer it up for sale to property developers. All of the inmates were transferred away to other prisons, and Holloway closed its distinctive gates for the final time in July 2016. It wasn't until 2019 that a sale was finally agreed, with the prison and all of its associated buildings now in the hands of property development company Peabody. They paid around $112 million for the site and now intend to create 1,000 homes within the confines of what was once one of the most notorious prisons in the United Kingdom. As of 2021, demolition work still hasn't begun, and Holloway Prison is still standing. Samizano Castle in Tuscany, Italy is one of the most stunning castles you'll ever see. It's a crying shame that it's abandoned, but abandoned is what it is, and it's been that way for a long time now. There's been a grand building standing at this site since 1605, when Spanish nobleman Ximenes of Aragon built a palazzo here. Although the castle that stands today is a redevelopment of the original work carried out by Marquis Ferdinando Ximenes Panciatici in 1853. It took 40 years for builders and architects to carry out all of the Marquis's elaborate and precise requests. By that time, the Marquis was very old and didn't get to enjoy his dream home for long. Samizano was converted into a five-star hotel after he passed away and was popular in that form for more than a century. But the increasing cost of upkeep, coupled with an ever-dwindling number of visitors, forced it to close during the early 1990s. There have been rumors about reopenings and redevelopment plans almost every year since then, but nothing has ever come to fruition. A visit to the site of the building known as Garage No. 7 in Kiev, Ukraine, fires up the imagination. 
What might this magnificent building once have been? An advanced military facility, perhaps? A top-secret warehouse or a grand cathedral? Based on its size and shape, you might even think that it's a crashed flying saucer. But it's none of these things. In reality, this is nothing more significant than an old bus station. Perhaps we're doing it a disservice by describing it in such terms, though. Back when Garage No. 7 opened in 1973, it was the biggest bus shelter in the country, seeing over 400 buses in and out every day and keeping 1,400 people employed to ensure its smooth running. The people who lived in the area during the 1970s were bemused by the strange design of their new landmark and took to calling it the circus. You won't find any acts taking the stage inside it today. Such is the state of dereliction within the old station that it would be tempting to believe it's been closed for 30 years or more, but it actually remained in service until 2015. There's no information available about the long-term plan for this site, but it seems likely that the rusted-up buses it contains will never move again. The Costa Concordia disaster is one of the most high-profile accidents at sea of the past 10 years, mostly because of the strange story behind it. The vessel should never have crashed at all. There was nothing mechanically wrong with it. The only reason that the $600 million luxury ship struck rocks off the coast of Italy on January 13, 2012 is because Captain Francesco Cettino was attempting to show off to people watching him on the shore. Cettino was later tried and convicted for his role in the disaster, and his former ship was towed to Genoa. Unbeknown to most people outside the Genoa area, the ship is still there today. And if you're a clever urban explorer, you might be able to get inside it and take photographs like these. It's obvious from these images that the ship suffered badly in the incident and has also decayed a little in the years since then. But it's still possible to get a sense of how magnificent it must once have looked. The ship cannot be repaired and will eventually be scrapped, which is a huge shame. Had it not been for the captain's idiotic actions, he would probably still be sailing today. Speaking of things that were once beautiful but are now awaiting demolition, here's the Agadeum Theatre in Brussels, Belgium. This stunning performance space was created under the guidance of architect Guillaume Sagers in 1905, using the neoclassical style on the outside and a blend of Art Deco and Art Nouveau influences for the interior. When it opened the following year, it almost immediately became the focal point of Brussels' nightlife. A cinema room was added to reflect the changing times in 1913, which were also reflected by the changing of the name to Diamond Palace. By the 1920s, it had become a dance and music hall under the name Pantheon Palace. The name and purpose of the building changed repeatedly, but its importance to the people of Brussels never did. By 1933, the dance hall was becoming unfashionable, but the cinema room was thriving. So the whole building became a movie theater under the original Agadeum name. That lasted until 1979, when the old theater became a community center. But the nonprofit community center couldn't handle the costs associated with running the building and was forced to close in 1985. A volunteer group keeps it clean and tidy, but the building has served no purpose ever since then. If you can speak Dutch, you'll notice that there's a clue to the shape and purpose of the building known as Kuppelgeven Genis in its name. Translated into English, it means Dome Prison. The architecturally unique prison was designed and built in Breda in the Netherlands in 1886 and is best known today for being the place that Dutch people were sent after the Second World War if they were found guilty of collaborating with the Nazis. It's a panopticon prison styled after the design made famous in 1791 by Jeremy Bentham and thought to be efficient because it allows the guards a clear view of every prisoner and every cell from their position right at the center of the dome. The Kubelgeven Genis holds the distinction of being declared a Dutch national monument while it was still open, receiving the designation in 2001. Conditions inside and outside the prison began to change around that time leading to it becoming a female-only prison. It stayed that way until 2013, when it was closed due to budget restrictions. Since then, 
it's been used to host a few one-off events and performances, but there's nobody based here permanently anymore. If you're into creepy abandoned locations, the former veterinary school in Anderlecht, Belgium, will take some beating. The building was shut down when the school moved to a new location in Liege in 1991, but someone forgot to back up all the old jars containing pickled animal remains, and they're still there. The remains, which include mutilated or deformed animals preserved in whole or in part, are mostly held within a sickly yellow liquid, which has been described by urban explorers as smelling worse than a polluted river on a hot summer's day. The smell of the specimens blends with the reek of mold in the decaying building to result in an odor you or I would probably never want to get close to. We salute the fortitude of the determined urban explorers who did so in order to bring us these images. Some of the jars are missing their lids, which makes them dangerous given that they're full of formaldehyde. It's a little surprising that the city's authorities haven't either demolished the spooky old school or at least made better attempts to make sure people get inside. But here we are with the proof that it's wide open. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.